Hi, my name is Nancy Golden and welcome to the House of Gifts. Today, I'm going to talk about the gift I missed. The gift I missed. As I mentioned earlier, I'm a retired educator who served 32 years in the school district of Philadelphia as a teacher, special education liaison, principal, and assistant principal of approximately eight schools in the district. Now I'm retired and I'm using my gifts to impact my circle of influence in a massive way. But I want to share a story with you. In my early years as a teacher, when I worked in the Kensington section of Philadelphia, I worked at a middle school and I was a resource room teacher. So I had a caseload of several students and there was this one student in particular. Let's call him Lucas. He was an eighth grade young man, very handsome, loved by all the girls, admired by all the boys but disliked by most of his teachers. Why? Because he was defiant, didn't like following the rules, and loved to walk the hallways. Now, Lucas was my resource room student, which means he had an IEP, an Individualized Education Program, and he would come to the resource room to get the adaptations, modifications and accommodations that he needed in a small group setting or one-to-one -one so that I could help him be successful when he would go and get instruction in the regular education class. I only serviced Lucas for reading because he was in the eighth grade, but he read on a first grade level. Now, he didn't read words well, but he was able, if a story were read to him, he could identify the main idea, he could sequence events, he could predict outcomes. Are you following me here? He followed the components of the reading process, but he couldn't read words. Very good comprehension. So, every year, as a special education teacher, you have to give an annual assessment to determine if you've met the goals and objectives of a child's IEP and to determine if there was any growth in the area of instruction. So since I taught reading to Lucas, I had to give him a reading test to determine if he has made, if he had made any growth. So this one day I said, Lucas, it's time for your annual assessment. And he said, oh, miss, you know I can't read. Give me a math test so I can show you how smart I am. Listen to what he said so that I can show you how smart I am. And I said, well, Lucas, I can't give you a math test, sweetie, because I am your reading teacher in special ed in the resource room. Oh, miss, please give me a test in math. I said, okay. So just to appease him, I gave him a math test. I used the Peabody Individualized Assessment, which is a test in reading and math and other subjects, but it's like a flip chart. And if the student can't read, you can read the prompts to them, but they are to figure out the answers by looking at the information on the chart. So, me, teacher of the year, said, eh, he's reading on a first grade level. His math is probably low as well. Well, I said, let me start him on maybe second grade. Now, in this test, once a student makes five consecutive errors, you stop the test. You can grade the test to determine the instructional level, the independent level, and the frustration level of that child in that subject. I started giving Lucas the test and I'm noticing the second grade test, zero errors, third grade, zero errors, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, 
10, 11. He didn't start making mistakes until the 12th grade. Oh my gracious. Once he finished, I scored the assessment and he scored a 12.5. That's post high school. This is my special student, special needs student with an IEP scoring 12.5 on a math assessment. I hugged him and I said, Lucas, you're a genius. And I hugged him and I screamed and I was so excited. And you know, Lucas, he's cool. He said, yeah, I know. Oh, so after he left my class and went back to his, to his classroom, I ran to the psychologist's office and I said, Dr. Jody, you have to test Lucas. He scored 12.5 on the Peabody. And we jumped around the desk and we hugged each other because we both had been working with him and we knew there was something special. So after a matter of maybe three weeks or so, she had given him all types of assessment, IQ tests and things of that nature. And she came back with the results and she said, Nancy, Lucas is mentally gifted. Mentally gifted. So how is it that a student in the eighth grade, reading on a first grade level, causing havoc in the school, walking the building, causing confusion, being defiant, never going to class. How is it that he's mentally gifted and no one picked it up? How does that happen? Because we spend too much time thinking about how smart a student is as opposed to thinking about how a student is smart. He was the gift I missed. Folks, please tune in to these vignettes. It will help you identify the gifts of your children and you have to start early. Don't wait for the school to do it. You do it, mom and dad. Start documenting and journaling the things that your children do. They will give you clues as to what makes them smart. Until next time. I'm Nancy Golden, and this has been The House of Gifts.